In this integrated rangeland management class, we've talked a lot about integrating livestock grazing with other uses on the land. Today, we're going to talk about integrating livestock with, with wood products, uh, forest products, but also orchards and uh, vineyards and uh, nut products. So anything that comes from a tree, can we use grazing to in that management practice? Okay, w one problem there is in plantations is that there's competition between the seedlings and the existing vegetation. So as trees are starting to be established, it's important to get rid of some of the vegetation between the trees so the young trees can actually grow. Another problem with that dense vegetation between trees is that it's habitat for voles and small rodents, and they cause damage to trees by eating the bark at the base. Uh, dense vegetation can also cause a problem for ri as a risk to fire, so that herbaceous biomass between the trees could be a, uh, a, a good way to start a fire and eliminate trees. And then finally, grazing could provide a solution, but grazing can also damage the trees, so, so there's a real challenge in management. Okay, as I mentioned, grazing could be a potential solution. Heavy livestock grazing can reduce weeds and prepare a site before the trees are even planted, so in, in site preparation, grazing could be used as a tool um, to reduce weeds and prepare the site. Uh, grazing can also be used uh, to reduce the herbaceous fuels for risk of fire, so those herbaceous fuels between the trees. And then finally, as we discussed, grazing can reduce that herbaceous vegetation that competes with the, the tree seedlings and the young trees. Uh, the, the competition between trees and the herbaceous uh, plants results um, from competition for soil and nutrients in, uh, in the soil profile. And we know that grazing can reduce root growth and therefore reduce the competition of herbaceous plants. This is a study that was done on orchard grass response. And you can see that uh, grazed uh, orchard grass plants had less root biomass in that very close to the, er the soil surface in that first couple of inches, 0 to 5 centimeters. So at that very close to the soil surface, grazing can be used for, to reduce root biomass and promote tree growth. There have been a number of studies that looked at grazing um, and its effect on uh, wood production and tree growth in forest plantations. Here are seven studies that were um, cited by Shero, uh, Steve Shero in a, a paper that looked at the role of grazing in forest plantations. And in all cases, in these seven that he uh, cites, uh, the grazing by sheep and cattle increased the diameter of Douglas fir uh, seedlings or, or um, plants and increased their height. And this is, was in a series of studies from three years, uh, age, the age stand of three years to 33. So it's clear that grazing can be used to promote growth of tree plants. Um, however, there are some downsides to using grazing in, in forest plantations or orchards. Uh, one is that there can be trampling of seedlings. Uh, it's, uh, you know, cattle aren't, or sheep aren't trying to trample the seedlings, but as they move through the orchard, they can cause some damage through trampling. Uh, soil compaction can also be an issue. We've seen these data before from Steckler where he was looking at um, trampling by uh, livestock and its effect on soil infiltration. And he looked at native oak woodlands and scotch pine in Wisconsin. And in both cases, you can see that the ungrazed site had much higher infiltration rates than the grazed site. So this is uh, something of, of, of concern and has to be ma uh, uh, monitored and, uh, and managed if grazing is going to be used in plantation settings. Another concern that a lot of people have is browsing, although this is actually something that can be managed uh, quite easily with uh, knowledge and the cor correct species. So the level of browsing can dep uh, seriously depends on the season of grazing, the livestock species, and the plants in the understory, the vegetation understory. We're going to talk about those three factors. But um, I don't want to discount the fact that browsing can occur, and if it's not managed, it can be quite severe. Some studies show up to 30% of young trees can suffer browsing damage. But the effectiveness of using prescribed grazing depends a lot on the plants and the animals. So it depends on the trees and the understory, if you're the trees and the understory. Deciduous trees are generally more palatable than evergreens. And even among evergreens, there's a wide range of, of, of palatability. So if you're using grazing in a tree setting, uh, you need to be careful uh, with what species is planted and figuring out when it is palatable and how palatable it is. 
If the understory is abundant and palatable, it's less likely that animals will turn that grazing animals will turn to trees. So managing the understory is important. And even when you're selecting a site for an orchard or a plantation, in during the site preparation stage, uh, selecting plants that are forage are are palatable to be the forage species in the understory is important because if you select the right species, animals will focus on the understory and not on the trees. Okay, we know that animals vary in um, how much they prefer herbaceous versus woody plants. So um, how much damage you're going to have from grazing depends on the species that's grazing. Cattle eat more grass than, sh than sheep. Cattle um, also tend to trample uh, more than sheep, so there's more trampling damage than sheep, so that's, um, there's kind of two sides to that coin. Um, sheep are more, more readily browsed deciduous trees than cattle, and goats can be used, but they're difficult because they're browsers by nature, and so they're more likely to uh, sample trees, especially deciduous trees. And then the season is also really important. Um, it's best to graze when the forage is the understory forage is available and palatable. Again, that's because animals will focus their um, efforts on those plants and not on the other uh, on trees. And it's also recommended that grazing uh, be conducted before the conifers start b bud break. So sometime before bud break and after bud break, uh, usually it's a time when you would reduce grazing pressure. Paying attention to the moisture is also important. It's important to gra um, graze, but um, remove the livestock when there's still so uh, soil moisture. So uh, grazing before this moisture is depleted is important because you need soil moisture to promote the shrubs. And just like any time of grazing, any type of grazing anywhere, you need to um, manage the animal numbers and distribution. That can be done by herding, by fencing. Uh, you can use soil and water supplement to manage distribution somewhat, but it's also really important to pay attention to where water and soil and supplement are placed because of trampling effects. Um, appropriate stocking rate must be set. And then, um, very important to consistently monitor, in this case we're monitoring the level of util utilization in the understory plants versus the tree crops. Grazing can be used in orchards and vineyards to reduce that um, understory vegetation. Uh, one of the reasons it's useful is because orchard trees are often planted in widely spaced patterns, so it, it's amenable to grazing between the trees. The ground cover must be managed, however, for the health and productivity of the orchard, because that's the primary goal of the practice. Um, again, livestock can be used to reduce that excessive um, herbaceous cover underneath the trees because that competes with the trees for water and nutrients. So just as we, as we discussed in forest plantations, um, grazing could be used to reduce the herbaceous biomass, which would reduce competition and potentially um, voles and rodents and fire risk also. Sheep and goats, in fact, have been used for centuries in the understory to control the uh, understory vegetation. So it's a historic practice that is coming back in vogue because of the pressure on sustainability and, and no herbicides, organic crops. So livestock and used in these studies can be quite effective, but it needs to be very careful in monitoring to avoid overgrazing and overbrowsing of the um, orchard trees. Um, the number of animals needed for targeted grazing in orchards fluctuates greatly um, with the growing season, so it's often necessary to have a second pasture to facilitate moving animals off of the orchard when needed, and livestock have to be removed when the orchard is very wet to avoid com um, compaction of the soil and trampling, um, and that wetness can happen just with the season or with uh, irrigation practices. Also, livestock may also be, need to be removed from the orchard for other management practices such as, um, uh, of, as harvesting or of uh, trimming the orchards to improve and, and pruning to improve the trees. Um, there may be health considerations also with the fecal material uh, that cattle or sheep or goats can bring to the orchard. So uh, the fecal material can cause uh, contamination of the fruits and that has to be very carefully managed. Uh, however, on the, on the other side, livestock can be used to remove the fruit that falls on the ground. Uh, an excessive amount of fruit on the ground can be a problem in orchards also. It can promote um, rodent activity and it can also promote bacteria and such in the soil, so oftentimes 
a livestock can be used to remove that excessive fruit on the ground. These are the references that I used in this presentation. There's a, a great number of uh, journal articles and uh, uh, book chapters that have been done on this topic. It's a difficult practice and often it's not used, but we, the science behind it is pretty strong. There is a lot of opportunity to use grazing in forest plantations, orchards, vineyards, and nut crops. So think outside the box.